Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Anne and today I'm bringing you my November to be read. So, as it is November 4th, I am currently in the middle of a few books. So I'd like to talk about those first and tell you a little bit about them um, before we get into some of the other books that I want to read this month. So I am currently in the middle of Tunnel of Bones by V. E. Schwab, by Victoria Schwab. I get confused between that. By Victoria Schwab. Um, on audio via script so I'm currently in the middle of that and I'd really like to finish that. So this is the second book in the Cassidy Blake series where a young girl um, can see ghosts and her parents are ghost hunters who are traveling around the world to film a documentary so you got you kind of get, can guess what happens about um, a young girl seeing ghosts traveling to the most haunted places in the world to find ghosts with their parents. <laughs> so I'm really, really enjoying it. I gave the first book, City of Ghosts, five stars, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in my October wrap-up. But the next book that I'm currently in the middle of is an e-book that I received in exchange for a review from, on my blog, and it's The Lost Power um, by Avanti Sandra. I'm not really very far into it, so I still have no idea what's kind of going on, but I'll read you the synopsis. So Spain, 1057. During a thunderous battle, the first king of Aragon wrestles Alexander the Great's priceless Egyptian weapon from the Moors, but finds it holds a terrifying and mysterious power. Nearly a thousand years later, on a fog-shrouded Napa Valley morning, gunshots and the sound of breaking glass ripped through the silence. Manny Marshall, an app designer with special martial arts abilities, and her twin brother, Will Aragons, quickly run toward the sound. Horrified, they discover a sniper has cut down two members of their family. Before the pool of blood on the living room floor is dry, the father sends the twins on a dangerous quest to recover Alexander's ancient weapon. Joined by a broad-shouldered friend who harbors a secret alliance with the Van Ops, an ultra-black cover agency, they soon discover the lethal sniper is from Russia. And they follow time-worn clues from a medieval Spanish castle to a lost warren under the streets of Jerusalem, racing to unlock the secrets that will lead them to an arcane power before a hostile state seizes the power and cripples the United States. To survive, they must go undercover and off-grid. No place is safe, a wrong move means death, and even a simple phone call is off-limits, because now... The sniper has a sight set on them. So this sounds really interesting, very action-packed and adventurous. So I'm really, really looking forward to continue reading it. The next book that I am in the middle of reading is A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. And I am really enjoying it. I'm not very far in. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling where our main character... Um, where our main character, Harper, has cerebral palsy, doesn't she? She is kidnapped and taken to Ember, Ember Fall to fall in love with the prince. So uh, it's a uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm really, really excited to get into it. It's been all over Booktube and the sequel, Hearts So Fierce and Broken, is coming out in 2020. So I'm really, really looking forward to continue reading this and get ahead of the games so I can read the next book when it comes out. The next book that I'm in the middle of reading is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Now this story is about Mia Corvair, who is a 16-year-old girl who is on a <laughs> revenge um, journey to avenge her father's death and her mother's imprisonment. I am really, really enjoying it so far. I'm only 89 pages in. The chapters are really, really long and the writing is very descriptive, very sarcastic and funny and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I know a lot of people say that it's quite boring for the first 100 pages and it takes a while to get into it, but I'm really loving it and I'm really, really looking forward to finishing this book and continuing with the series God's Grave and Dark Dawn um, within the new year. The book that I wanted to read in November was The Extended Summer of Anna and Jeremy by Jennifer Ann Shore. I am friends with Jennifer on Instagram and she messaged me about her, her new book coming out and she wanted to send it to me. So it is um, signed by Jennifer 
I picked this up on the 1st of November because I wanted something light, fluffy to get me back into the mood of reading because I read so many books in October. I was feeling a bit worn out and tired. So I picked up this summer contemporary romance novel and I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. It was really amusing, really great, um, really short too. I finished it in two days and I really, really loved it. So if you're looking for something to get you into the summery kind of mood, this book is definitely for you. So this is about Anna who is always on her best behaviour, turning in homework assignments early, keeping her head down during disagreements and living life vicariously through action movies. Faced with the re reality of her reputation as a lame high school cliché, she decides now is the time for a change. So when hotshot basketball player Jeremy Blake um, interrupts her late night plotting over a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch, she convinces him to help. As they explore the summer together, and I can't help but wonder what else will fall into place as autumn approaches. So it's really, really interesting because it um, jumps back in time between summer and autumn when she's back in school and kind of how, what happened during the summer and what um, she's feeling and everything that happened and the repercussions of those decisions when she gets back to school. Her younger sister Fretza is found dead, their whole Viking clan mourns, but it is Lena alone who never recovers. Fressa is the sister that should have lived, and Lena cannot rest until she knows exactly what killed Fressa and why, and how to bring her back. She strikes a dark deal with Hela, the Norse goddess of death, and begins a new double life to save her sister. But as Lena gets closer to bringing Fressa back, she dredges up dangerous discoveries about her own family and finds herself in the middle of a devastating plan to spur Ragnarok, a deadly chain of events leading to total world destruction. Still, with Le her sister's life, uh, in the balance, Lena is willing to risk it all. She's willing to kill. How far will she go before the darkness consumes her? So I love all um, mythology kind of stories. So as you can see, I've got um, I have Circe here, and um, I haven't read it yet, but I love all the mythology and all the history and all of that kind of thing. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. Um, the next e-arc that I want to read is The Failed Tress by Sophia Menasini and Lexi Moorhead. Oh, by Sophia Menasini. So this is a pirate kind of story, which is really, really interesting. So Captain Shay Lara is the current leader of the Veiled Duchess, the most feared pirate ship in all of Nereid. And now, after completing her former mentor's final score, she's retiring. Everything seems to be coming to an end, until a mysterious stranger drags her back into the world, into the fold, with an offer for a score she can't refuse. All she has to do is kidnap the crown princess of the Northern Queendom, Princess Joanna of Arethusa. The price is just within reach. But sparks fly as the two women collide, and an obscured threat that could upturn Shay's entire world storms on the horizon. She'll face it alone unless she can allow herself the support she needs from old and new allies alike. Something's coming and Shay is at the center of it. So this is queer, it's fantasy, it's about pirates, and I'm really, really interested in reading this story. I also have another e-arc that I got from Edelweiss. It's called Mercy House by Alina Dillon. And this is about, it's a de debut novel about a refuge in, um, a refugee in Brooklyn for women in trouble. So, in the Bedford neighborhood of Brooklyn stands a century old row house presided over by renegade, silver haired sister Evelyn. Gruff and indomitable on the surface, warm and wry underneath, Evelyn and her fellow sisters make Mercy House a safe haven for the abused and abandoned. Women like Lucia, who arrives in the dead of night. Mei Li, the Chinese and Russian house veteran, Desiree, a loud and proud prostitute, Esther, a Haitian immigrant and aspiring collegiate, and Katrina, knitter of lumpy scarves. All of them know what it's like to be broken by men. Little daunts Evelyn until she receives word that Bishop Robert Hawkins is coming to investigate Mercy House and the nuns, whose secret efforts to help the women in ways forbidden by the church may be uncovered. But Evelyn um, has secrets too dark enough to threaten everything she has built. Evelyn will do anything to protect Mercy House and the vibrant, diverse women it serves. 
confront gang members, challenge her beliefs, even face her past. As she fights to defend all that she loves, she discovers the extraordinary power of mercy and the grace it grants, not just to those who receive it, but to those strong enough to bestow it. So this is going to be a very deep um, look into abuse, domestic abuse, um, pro pro probably um, sexual assault will be involved, I'm not very sure, but this will take a deeper look into religion and how um, we can give mercy to other people in the world. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading that one. The next e-art that I'd like to read is Smokescreen by Terry Blackstock. Terry Blackstock is a very um, New York Times best-selling suspense thriller author. Um, so I'll read the synopsis because um, it, it does it better <laughs> at explaining it than I can. So one father was murdered, another was convicted of his death, all because the children fell in love. Nate Beckett has spent his life fighting wildfires instead of the lies and rumors that drove him from his Colorado hometown. His mother begs him to come back now that his father has been released from prison, but it isn't until he's sidelined by an injury that he's forced to return and face his past. But that means facing Brianna too. Fourteen years ago, Nate was in love with the preacher's daughter. When Pastor Strickland discovered Brianna defied him to sneak out with Nate, um, the fight between Strickland and Nate's um, drunken dad was loud and very public. Strickland was found murdered later that night and everyone accused Roy Beckett. When the church burned down not long after, people assumed Nate set the fire to get in even for his father's conviction. He let the rumours fly and left town without looking back. Brianna is stunned to learn the man convicted of murdering her father has been pardoned. The events of that night set her life on a bad course, and now she's fighting a brutal custody body battle with her ex and his new wife, where he's using lies and his family's money to sway the judge. Brianna is barely hanging on, and she's turned to alcohol to cope. Shame and fear consume her, as Nate and Brianna deal with the present, including new information of, about that fateful night and a wildfire that's threatening their town. The past keeps igniting. Nate is a steady force Brianna has so desperately needed, but she'll have to learn to trust him again first. This is a really, um, it's a romantic, contemporary, kind of thriller, mysterious <laughs> kind of story. So it's going to be really, really cool. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I feel like it's going to um, uh, discuss some really strong themes within the story. So I'm, as you can tell, I'm trying to get through a lot of arcs that I have. Um, so the last arc that I'm hoping to read this month is Dawn of Dreams by Broen Leroux. So this is a fantasy, um, dystopian kind of world. So lost family heirlooms, sinister mutants, an ancient book hiding legendary secrets. Such mythical things should not exist in the futuristic world of 2073. Yet this reality is forced on two strangers. Jaden and Kayla are blissfully unaware the world is about to be invaded when a relentless, age-old force casts them together. The shocking truth is revealed. They are hunted by the hideous, malevolent monster prowling their community. Worse, it is invisible to everyone but them. Forced down a dark and dangerous path, the pair discover their stalker isn't the only thing they have in common. As they quest for solutions while trying to survive, their unique abilities surface. They team up with otherworldly allies. After deciphering an ancient an enchanted tool, they get the first answer. But knowledge comes at a price. In a world on the verge of destruction, can Jaden and Kayla solve the puzzles and find a way to save it? All while trying to make sense of this inexplicable connection they feel for each other. This sounds really interesting. Monsters, romance, um, solving clues and puzzles, my kind of thing. So I'm really, really looking forward to that one. Now, to finish off <laughs> the Grishaverse or the Shadow and Bone trilogy, I'm going to be reading Ruin and Rising by Leo Ardugo. Now, this is the third book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So, in this series, we follow Alina Starkov, a chief believes she's a normal, average human who is a map drawer in the First Army for the King. Until they go through the fold and magic erupts from her body and she is taken to become a member of the Darklings army and danger and everything ensues 
and it's a really, really um, amazing series that I've given both book one, Shadow and Bone, and book two, Siege and Storm, five stars, which I will be talking about in my October wrap-up. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this and continuing and finishing this series. And talking about Lee Bardugo and the Grishaverse, I am hoping to also read Six of Crows within this month. So this is part of the Grishaverse, but not, um, but has nothing to do with the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So this is about uh, Kaz Brecker, who gets a group of misfits together so they can kidnap this scientist who has created this... Um, Thing that could hurt Grisha. So I'm not really sure about what else happens within the story, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. And as part as, and as part of the Backlist Reader Book Club, we are going to be reading The Hunger Games, starting November 11th, as a reread for our anticipation for the new Suzanne Collins book, that is the prequel to The Hunger Games. So we will be reading Hunger Games. In November and December, the Catching Fire in December and January, and Mocking Jay in February and March. So I'm really, really uh, excited to reread this, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting back into this series because I haven't read it since I was really, really young. As part of a buddy read with two beautiful and lovely ladies, Tiffy and Tanya, we are going to be reading The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. So this is book one in the Mistborn series, and honestly, I don't really know what this is about. It's a high fantasy adult no novel, um, and it's something with magic. They ingest metal, and magic comes out. I I'm not really sure, but I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one, too. Also, as part of another group read that I'm taking part in on um, the caravan, um, website. We are going to start Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Um, we're going to take this slow, so there's no way we're going to be finishing this in November. Um, I think we're going to take it like 100 pages. Um, maybe 100 pages every week. I'm not really sure what we're going to be doing. We're going to read the first 100 pages. Um, starting November the 11th and see how we go with it, this story but I'm really really looking forward to it it's another adult high fantasy and it's going to be my first Samantha Shannon book um, this has been all over the book community so I don't really think I need to talk about this one but I'm really looking forward to reading this it's a huge book so I won't be finishing it this month <sighs> and another book that I'm going to be reading as a buddy read with Tiffy is A Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. So this is a prequel to the um, the Mortal Instruments. So this is the Infernal Devices, and we follow Tessa Gray, who um, gets wrapped up in the Shadowhunter world and realizes she might not actually be a human. So there's a love triangle within the series. Gem is amazing. Um, who else? Jem and Will, they're so cute. I really love them. They're parpatai, and I'm just really excited to get back into the series because I remember that this series actually broke me. I bawled my eyes out reading this series, and I'm looking forward to reading it again and seeing what I think of it as an older, mature person. And the next book that I hopefully want to get to within November is The Diviners by Libba Gray. Libba Bray. So this is the first book in the Diviner series. It is um, based in the 1920s where these people have these magic. Um, we follow Evie who is a... who can touch things and she can get visions and stuff. Um, and there's a murder mystery within the story. Um, it's been really, really popular, really hyped up because the fourth book um, is coming out in February of 2020. So I'm hoping to read this one. I got this for $3 at a um, at the Rotary Book Club. So I'm really, really happy. Um, book fair. So I'm really, really happy to get into this. Got it for £3. I had it. I have... 
I did um, get it out from the library so I can return this and read my own copy and annotate it and everything. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. So, as you can see, there's a lot of books that I want to get to within this month. I'll probably listen to some more audiobooks because I've really been getting into audiobooks on Scribd that I'm really, really looking forward to. I'll leave a link down below for you to join Scribd. Script, um, if you want, I'm not endorsed by them, sponsored or anything, so yeah. And um, thank you for watching this video, I hope you like it, and please remember to give it a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Bye!